Right, good morning guys, this is the third day of our lockdown, and I, I'm not saying I'm going to do one of these every day, uh, that's not what I'm saying, I felt yesterday very strongly to send out a message, and um, uh, the file was too big, I didn't know how to do it, being a baby boomer, not a millennial, uh, I struggle with these things, so um, I'm just doing the best that I can, and I want to just give you my contribution um, to encourage you uh, in your life, because for me that's very important. I need to do that. And in Psalm 18, it says, "Yeah, it's no wonder that I love you, O oh God. You have granted me a security that I could never find among the things of this world." <laughs> have you searched for security in this world? Have you have you searched for security in money? Have you searched for security in a person? Have you uh, found yourself coming short, being disappointed, getting hurt? Well, then this is for you this morning. I want to encourage you that there's hope. There's hope beyond this life. You have erased from my life the fear of death. That's huge. That's huge. If you are in him, the fear of death need not concern you no longer. If you are busy about his business... Doesn't matter if a thousand fall at my right hand, and um, you know, I will fear no evil. Uh, you know, because um, your rod and your staff they there to guide me. It says, "What follows the grave no longer causes fearful concern." I'm not concerned about the grave. I'm not concerned about life. Uh, I put it this way, death. But I'm concerned that I make an eternal difference in your life while I'm alive and while I'm breathing. You see, what Ramon said this morning concerning um, uh, maturity is that when you mature as a child of God, you look beyond yourself and you look to the needs and, and, the, and, the, and the well-being of others because you know that you've been taken care of by your Creator, because you've got to know Him. You're an adult now, um, and you've got to know Him better and, and you realize that um, not only is he concerned about you, but he's got a purpose for your life. So here's some of my purpose for your life. I'm, I'm sharing my faith with you because I find that's very important. It says, um, the traumatic experiences of this life cannot destroy me. They cannot destroy me. You hold the keys of life and death in your power and in your hand. No circumstances, no coronavirus. Uh, and know this, that, and the other that this world fears. Okay, fear is not of God, not the horrific fear, because fear paralyzes you and causes you to lose hope. Okay, um, you got no traction in in your momentum moving forward when you're in fear. Fear causes you to become stationary. And so, therefore, you become a target, a sitting target, a, a stationary target for the enemy to take out. It says, you are never out of reach, but are ever aware of my problems and conflicts. Have you got problems? Have you got conflicts? Are you sitting in the world in the midst of a conflict that everybody is experiencing right now? And uh, if you are, then um, I, I want to say there's, there's good news for you. There's good news for you. Listen, how great and all-powerful is my God, okay? The quaking of the earth, the shaking of the mountains, the blackness of the night, the beauty of the heavens, the lightning that crisscrosses the skies, the oceans that lash against the shores. Um, this and much more bears witness to the majesty of my God, the majesty of of my God. God is great, folks. He's got this whole universe and every single galaxy that he created, he's got in control. <laughs> Nothing's out of control. Just because mankind spins out of control doesn't mean God's not on his throne and in control. He's in control. It's all been written. You can go and read it for your own security and your own peace of mind. Go and read what God says about you. Go and read what God says about your future. Go and read what God says about your present. And I want to say it'll bring you peace and joy, security and contentment. And this is the God who is concerned about me. 
He reaches into my distraught life to heal my wounds. Folks, we've all got wounds. Every single one of us have been disappointed by somebody because we've put our trust in somebody that has disappointed us. He's the one. He's your healer. He's the one that brings healing and, and, and fixes your wounds. Okay, how did he do that? By his stripes. That's how he did that. Okay, he, em he encompasses me with eternal love. He abides with me. His love is eternal, folks. It's not for a moment in time. It's not, oh, well, I love you. And then, and then that's it. No, 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 no. You can't bring God's love into what we understand as love. Our thinking of, uh, of love has been distorted by hurt and wounds and um, people around us. He abides with me even in the midst of conflict or calamity. <laughs> he abides with me even in conflict or calamity. So he's very much part of our lives while COVID-19 is putting fear into others. Listen, COVID-19 is made by people. And, and, and people that have been controlled by the Luciferian system. Lucifer, the devil himself, he's actually behind the whole thing. Because in order to get rid of the old world order... Well, in order to bring the new world order in, you've got to get rid of the old one. I mean, it makes sense. So what they're doing uh, after this, after we come out of this, this world will never be the same again. Never be the same again. So embrace change. It's here to stay. Change with it. Don't be so stubborn and stuck in your ways, people. Change with the times. Become a blessing to others. I want to say I love you this morning. I'm not doing it for a platform. I don't need a platform. Okay. But I have a voice. And, 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 and you have a voice, and you are important. And if it's not to yourself, then it's to others. And, and, and folks, when you begin to understand the love of God, you begin to understand how much he loves you, how much you can love yourself with the love of God in order to love others. Because unless you love your neighbor as you love yourself, uh, you'll be of no earthly good. No earthly good whatsoever. All right. So he abides with me even in the midst of conflicts or calamity. He sets me free from self-idolatry. You see, that's uh, uh, what Ramon mentioned this morning on our online Biker Church uh, service, is that we mature beyond ourselves. We mature as children of God so that we are able to obey what he asks us to do. It's not about you and your feelings, because that's self-idolatry. You, your feelings, woe is me, um, there's no hope for me. I want to say there's hope for you. God says there's hope for you. Don't make him a liar just because of your feelings. Don't put yourself under your circumstances. Look up. He's, he's above your circumstances. Look up. He's not tainted by your circumstances because he rose from the dead. He knows what we go through. He understands the, the struggles and, 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 and the difficulties of our lives. And yet he overcame them. But it cost him his life. But his DNA wasn't Adam's DNA. His DNA was eternal DNA. That's why the grave couldn't hold him down. So it's exciting for us today that our God has not fallen like rugby, boxing, uh, soccer, Hollywood, uh, Disney World. I mean, everything has fallen. The bottle stores are closed. The supermarkets are closed. Mammon is shut down for a season. But you see, all of this is bringing about the whole Bitcoin, money in the clouds. The Lord showed me something, and I'm just going to throw it out there and share it with you. And I'm not saying that you mustn't, but I'm just saying, you know who the prince of the power of the air is. That's Lucifer himself. That's where our warfare lies. It's not in the third heaven, okay? It's in the first heaven, in this atmosphere. That's where he rules and reigns over us. And um, I just decided in my simplicity, I'm not investing in his economy. I'm not investing in the cloud. I'm not investing in his economy. Once the money is gone and we don't tangibly feel it anymore, forget about taking the chip because then you become one of his children and not one of uh, our creator's children. You've actually turned allegiance like Judas did. You turn allegiance to the one who created you for the creator, for the created. And you begin to worship the created and not the creator. Let me go on. He shields me from the forces that are intent on my destruction. He shields me from the forces 
that surround me for my destruction. It is no wonder, O oh God, that I love you. you. You need to understand that his word is true, folks. He's truth. There is no other truth but him, the creator of everything that's been created. There can, uh, uh, can there be any God but this God that I love? What gods do you love? Are you disappointed that your gods have now fallen, small g? They've all fallen. You can't trust in them. There's no security in the systems of this world. You know why? Because the systems of this world have not been built with a cornerstone in mind. The storms come uh, as uh, the buildings are on the sand. They're not on the rock. And the storms come. And, and, and great is the fall of those um, buildings. And if people have built on anything but um, the cornerstone, the rock, Jesus Christ, they've built on quicksand. And you see, when storms come, they get washed away. There's a great worldwide tsunami that's just taken place. Folk, make sure that your heart is secure to the rock that doesn't roll. Amen. He surrounds me with his strength. His strength, not mine. I've got no strength in myself. I'm just flesh and blood like you. But in the supernatural, I'm powerful and I'm strong. And he strengthens me with his strength and clothes me with his grace. He puts into my, listen to this, he puts into my hands gifts to relay to others, and he entrusts me with tasks. He puts into my hands gifts to relay to others, and he entrusts me with tasks. He's given me a task, and I'm, I'm sharing it with you. He's, he's, he's given me gifts to relay to others. I'm, I'm a gift to you. You a gift to someone else. We are gifts to each other. Forget about giving stuff. Anybody can give stuff. Those that are rich can give more expensive stuff. Those that are poor can give less stuff. But when you give of yourself and of time, do you know what, folks? When you get to the end of your life, you're going to give an account for the time that has been lent to you. you don't, you're not your own. You do not belong to yourself. You didn't create yourself. There is a creator. He owns you. He's lent you time. And he's allowed you to be alive at this point in time, 2020. You have a purpose and a reason for being alive. And I want to say at the end of the day, we're going to give an account for the time that we've been allotted. You give an account for that. You might miss the, the great white throne judgment that the world's got to go through, but you gain to the beamer seat of Christ to receive your rewards and your crowns for ruling in the millennium, in the millennial rule of Christ. We rule with him. Okay, Not any governments of this world. But uh, uh, the government of the kingdom of God begins to rule in righteousness on this planet. He says, yeah, he entrusts me with tasks far beyond my human abilities and enables me to carry them out. He ordains me as his child and servant, destined to accomplish his purposes among his people of this world. Okay, I've got tasks to accomplish. they his tasks, not mine. When I get busy with my tasks, I get into trouble. Ask me. I know. Full of wounds and scars because of my rebellion. Thus I celebrate God's presence in my life and world. That's how I celebrate His presence. That's how I worship Him in obedience when I minister and when I speak to you. God is not dead he lives. Coronavirus doesn't touch him, and it's not caught him by surprise. It's under his feet, because that's where Satan is, under his feet. Okay, If you are in God, you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. <laughs> eh? We have the victory. God has given us the victory through Christ Jesus, our Lord. I mean, it's a fantastic uh, uh, um, revelation to Twigon. God is not dead. He lives. I rejoice in his concern and love for me. And I will proclaim, O oh Lord, your praises to anyone who will listen. You don't have to listen to my voice. But if you listen, I will proclaim his praises and I will sing and shout and dance. You don't want me to sing. And I will sing, shout and dance in the joy of knowing that you are my God. Folks, be encouraged today. Fear not. Look up. Your redemption draws near from above and not below. If you are seated in heavenly places, if your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, if your DNA is eternal, eternally God's DNA dwelling within you, you have eternity to look forward to. 
heaven to gain, hell to shun. Okay, you have tr been transformed from death into life, never to see death, just to go through the valley of the shadow of death. The sting has been removed, it's our final enemy, and we embrace life, eternal life, abundant life. Father, I ask that you bless uh, uh, those that I send this to, and I send it to them because you love them, and you've given me a task to tell them that you love them. I'm not coming to show how clever I am. I'm coming to show how foolish I am and how good you are. And so, Lord, I ask that you give them peace and bless them with security in you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray this. Amen. Bless you. Have a fantastic day, because you can.